Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. Almost super shot out there. Uh, today we have If These Walls Could Sing. And yes, absolutely, yesterday at the very end I said this is a very Disney thing. It is a Disney Plus original, but it is not, has nothing to do with Disney. Nothing at all. But it's not a documentary about sharks or boats or pyramids or mummies or anything else. It is a music-related one. And... Hmm. What two words do you think of when you think of Abbey, when you hear the words Abbey Road? You think of the Beatles, of course. This came out probably 2022, probably around the same time as that Beatles long-form multi-episode documentary from Peter Jackson. This is an hour and 29 minutes long, and uh, it is directed and produced by Mary McCartney, a name you should recognize, maybe? Uh, that's the daughter of Paul and Linda McCartney. I believe Linda was his first wife, unless he had one before her for a short time. I don't know. But she's probably the most prominent historically of Paul's wives. Uh, oh, yeah. He's one of the members of the Beatles, for those of you who aren't old enough to know that. If yesterday's episode with Schoolhouse Rock wasn't nostalgic enough, now here's an episode that is... Nostalgic for many different generations uh, in the 20th century. <laughs> you know, that last century, so long ago, the 20th century, um, 23, 23, 24 years ago, yeah. This uh, documentary is not about the Beatles, but the Beatles figure prominently into this because they pretty much put Abbey Road on the map. It, it, yeah, it existed all the way back in the 1930s, I believe. It was made to record, I think, the London Symphony Orchestra. They recorded onto these things called records live, like recorded it right there. It was a whole new process, a whole new thing. And uh, yeah, it was, you know, always been a, a, a recording studio for years, but until um, somebody pulled the right strings and got this new band that was sort of bubbling up in, in London area, you know, decided to bring him in, have him record some songs. Uh, Abbey Road wasn't really well known. And for those of you who know the Beatles, uh, Abbey Road is an intrinsic part of it. I'm not telling you something you don't know. Uh, uh, Beatles, Beatles friends, please forgive me, okay? Because, yeah, I, I'm explaining things that, yes, you know more than anybody else. It's I know a lot less than you do. It is just the way it is. But I'm going to explain it to everybody, and some people may not know these things. Abbey Road is a recording studio in London, um, right off a of prominence. Well, now a prominent street, <laughs> where you'll you'll find fans often crossing the street and being at the risk of be being hit by cars um, to try to mimic the classic album cover for. The album called Abbey Road. Uh, their last album, their final album. Oh man, I'm, see, you know more than I do. Anyway, a lot of their most uh, iconic songs and albums have all been recorded at Abbey Road it, for a number of reasons. One, they had the run of the place and they did it, they got it for free. It was in their contract. They were able to use every part of the studio for as long as they wanted because they were the freaking Beatles. Yeah, when they became the biggest band in all of history, they uh, <laughs> they could do what they wanted, and uh, they made good use of it. And you get to see um, Mary interviewing her father, Paul, and Ringo as well, separately. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, not John or George, for reasons. You, you probably know why. Um, yeah, <laughs> but there's other people who've recorded in that in that studio over the years. Part of rock royalty, rock history. Uh, Elton John uh, is part of the Hollies. Hollies, yeah. Uh, Jimmy Page, uh, Roger Waters, uh, Pink Floyd. <laughs> I mean, just seriously, there are moments where each of these bands uh, kind of crisscross with the era of the Beatles. 
but there's also stuff that's and also and there's also people featured and music featured that do not cross over with the Beatles directly. All all of them recognize that history, but uh, you'll recognize some certain uh, orchestral tunes uh, from to America's uh, greatest uh, modern composer, John Williams. You hear the Indiana Jones theme song, Raiders of the Lost Ark theme song? Yeah, that was recorded there. Uh, in 1980, uh, they had not recorded Star Wars or Empire Strikes Back there, but they decided, hey, you know what? We're a big deal now. Let's see if we can do Abbey Road to, to score Raiders of the Lost Ark. And from then on, they came back and they returned to the Jedi and they did the prequels and probably did the sequels there too. I'm, I'm pretty sure they did, but I I could be wrong. Uh, but yeah, so Abbey Road is now an intrinsic part of Star Wars and Lucasfilm. And you get to see interviews with George Lucas and John Williams and a number of other people. So that has a, like, this is a double, you know, connection to me. Uh, there's so, I mean, between the Beatles and, I mean, the love of music and Star Wars and everything else, uh, some of the greatest music ever recorded was recorded in these studios. So if, what, whether you love classical music, uh, whether you love uh, Shirley Bassey singing Goldfinger and fainting at the end, but basically just because she had to hold that long note at the end of the theme, she was singing literally to the credits sequence as she was singing in Abbey Road. And uh, she had to time her lyrics to what she was seeing on screen. And apparently she hit that gold finger <laughs> or whatever the word was the very last word was um she held that longer than she should have and uh, you get to see that story there's stories again going back to the beatles you get to see uh hear stories that beatles fans like diehard ones probably already know but uh the recording of life in the day from a, a sergeant pepper and uh the the uh, just so many like neat stories uh, and the great thing about this is that Mary grew up and she the first time she ever stepped foot in Abbey Road uh, Studios she was a baby you see some of the earliest stuff of her just crawling around you know while daddy's in there recording and mom's you know watching her taking care of her it's it's kind of a neat thing well dad is actually at this point she was born in 1969, so they were recording stuff for Wings at that point. So, yeah, or eventually would be. Either way, Wings <laughs> features prominently in the first few minutes of this uh, when she's introducing the film. And, uh, of course, deep cut with Beatles and Brian Epstein and all the history that goes into that. This, this is what I love about this. This is about a physical place you can go to. Maybe you can't go inside. I, I don't know if they give tours. I, I kind of doubt they do. Um, I could be wrong, but uh, you can go to these places. You can walk in the street and almost get hit by a car, just like Paul McCartney does at the end over the credits. <laughs> he recreates the walk by himself, and this blue car comes zipping by, just, just missing him. You almost killed Paul McCartney, you idiot. Yeah, so uh, this, for music fans, there, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, yeah, I knew Abbey Road with the Beatles and Star Wars, John Williams. I knew those connections, but I had no idea uh, how many other people. Oasis shows up here. Both brothers, both Gallagher brothers actually show up in this. Maybe not together, but there's footage of them recording in the 90s. Uh, the, Oas the Oasis albums. So it's, yeah. Um, you get to see just a, a tremendous amount of influence that uh, Abbey Road had on so many. Uh, my, Martin, uh, I, I can't say his name, uh, not the original Elder Martin, but the son, Martin. Why is, why can I say? George Martin was the older producer for, uh, he dealt with that. But his son is in the studio for these interviews and he's literally playing back pieces of the, I think the masters um, of the Beatles albums, of Life in the Day, on the analog systems they were recorded on. Not the digital boards and everything else. And by the way, at one point, um, Abbey Road Studios hit a rough patch after the Beatles were no longer making records. Uh, they hit a rough patch and they started selling off all their equipment. 
uh, that's that's just to me that's you're selling off you terrifyingly huge chunks of history and thankfully Paul McCartney bought a majority of it and more than likely has is responsible for putting it back in there there's some pianos in there that were used in the recording of those albums that are still in there now uh, it's a historic landmark and uh, yeah I'm not musical in any way and I still want to put my fingers on those keys I, I want to hear the echo I want to hear the sound of life in the day played over the analog system in there and just weep uncontrollably that's what I want to do that's when the billion dollar lottery later this week <clears throat> yeah or last week or whenever I don't know what today is or when the next drawing is but anyway uh, I highly recommend this. If you're a music fan, if you're a Beatles fan, if you're a John Williams fan, if you're just a fan of music, this is a touchstone, not a remembrance. This is this is just a a look at a touchstone piece of music history that cannot uh, probably ever be repeated. Yeah, yeah. This uh, toward the end there, they have Kanye West show up. You can probably skip over that part but <clears throat> you know either way <laughs> yes everybody apparently if you had if you got a few bucks towards the end anybody can go in there and Kanye certainly has enough bucks or did anyway definitely uh worth checking out for music fans let's pick tomorrow's episode 214 214 staying really low I'm surprised I mean with so many things to choose from Okay. Oh, okay. Hmm. I'm not sure about this one. <laughs> 214 uh, is a movie. So we haven't had a movie in a long time. It's always been documentaries. Shorts and series and all sorts of stuff. Um, you said 214, right? I'm just making sure my memory is really short. I'm getting old. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll just figure it out. Uh, if I guess it, I'm going to get it wrong. Liz, Lindsay Lohan's in this one. But it's not what you think. This is Liz and Dick. This with Taylor. Richard. No, not Richard Harris. I don't know why I can't say his name I, like I did yesterday. I just, yeah. My brain is just not pulling out names anymore. Anyway, Liz and Dick is what we're watching next on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow with that.